Oh, this one's not afraid at all. We're lucky it got that close. Welcome to Wildlife Adventures. Today, we are visiting two beaches on the south shore of the Gaspé Peninsula. The first one is in a town called New Carlisle, and I don't know what we can find there. But I assume we can see North Atlantic seabirds like herring gulls and double-crested cormorants. We never know what we could find, so let's hope we find something interesting. On the second beach, situated in a town called Paspebiac, I hope to see arctic terns, or maybe common terns because I saw them last summer and I want to show them to you. This was a pretty odd day and you will see a lot of atmospheric distortion in the clips. This is similar to what you see over a barbecue grill when you are cooking. Unfortunately, there isn't much I can do about it other than getting closer to what I'm filming, which can be obviously pretty difficult with wildlife. I did my best to avoid it, but nothing is perfect. You can see this effect here on this clip of herring gulls I found on the first beach. Well, let's start with the first beach. At first, I had trouble finding animals on this beach. I found some gulls and a dragonfly, but the beach seemed pretty empty. Eventually, I saw a bunch of gulls getting excited over something in the distance, so I decided to go check what they were up to. On my way there, I saw a killdeer moving on the beach. They are very hard to spot on this kind of beach when they are immobile, so I doubt I would have seen it if it stayed still. Killdeers make their nests on the ground. And they do something pretty interesting to keep predators away from them. There is a behavior called distraction display in which an animal attracts the attention of a predator to bring it away from something. Usually, their nests are their young. Plovers, like the killdeer, are known to do this a lot. Sometimes, they fake having broken wings, or they fake being unable to fly by running away from a predator instead of flying. They do that to make themselves attractive preys by looking easy to get. When they have baited the predator away from their nest, they fly away. Sometimes, they also do something called false brooding. They make it look like they are brooding to bait predators to a location away from their real nests. I believe this one was doing just that, as it was running away from me when I first saw it, and I don't think it was over its real nest when it sat down on the beach. I didn't go check because I didn't want to harass it, so I moved on to the gull's location. Unfortunately, the gulls weren't that close, and by the time I got there, they were already gone. At least, I found a small stream near the gulls' location, and I followed it to a wetland spot where a few American crows were foraging. I love American crows. They are one of my favorite animals. They are omnivorous and will eat almost anything. Grains, seeds, fish, worms, carrions, you name it. They are highly social birds, and you will often see them in groups. On winter nights, they can gather in large communal roosts that can contain tens of thousands of individuals. That will be interesting to see, and I will try to visit one in an episode this winter. There's a lot to say about crows, and we are sure to encounter them again, so we will not dwell on them too much today. I left that beach to head to the next one in Paspebiac. When I got there, I immediately found a nice group of great black-backed gulls. If you look at the group, you can see some gulls that are quite different. They are immature ones. Their feathers are not the right color yet, and they are brown and white instead of charcoal and white like the adults. You can also see that their beak is not yet yellow and red like the adults. The great black back gull is the largest gull in the world. Its wingspan can reach over 160 centimeters or 5 feet 3. That's quite impressive. That's close to the height of the average American woman. They are mostly found on the Atlantic coasts near the ocean, but they can also be found inland near the Great Lakes. 
They are omnivorous and opportunistic feeders, and they will eat crustaceans, mollusks, fishes and other marine animals. They can also eat carrions, and sometimes they feed from garbage dumps, so they will eat pretty much anything. It's not uncommon that they will steal food from other animals. They will also eat eggs from other birds. They're pretty large and they can do pretty much what they want. Still, those ones are pretty afraid of humans. When I tried going around them, they flew away even if I was probably over 50 feet away. I suspect they are comfortable around humans in densely populated areas. I think you can find them in cities like Boston and Halifax. They should be pretty used to humans in those places. I'd like to see them up close to see how big they are. After looking at the gulls, I walked towards where I had previously seen terns. On my way there, I found this little bird. It seemed to ignore me or to be comfortable around me, which is unusual for birds around here. It kept getting closer to me and it was pretty hard to film, but eventually it settled and I was able to take a nice look at it. It is a savanna spiral. You can identify it by the yellow spot close to its eye. They feed mostly on insects and seeds. They can be found in open areas with low vegetation, so this one was in a pretty normal spot. There's a lot of low vegetation close to this beach. After this bird, I walked to the end of the beach. I saw a turn in flight on my way there, but I wasn't fast enough to film it. I couldn't find any others, but I still found something pretty interesting. There was a group of northern gannets in the water close to me, and I was able to film them diving to catch fish. They're pretty impressive to watch. On the next episode, I will visit one of the largest northern gannet colonies in the world. It contains an estimated 54,000 couples. I've been there before and it's quite impressive, so I think it's gonna be a pretty nice episode. After filming those northern gannets, I decided to call it a day and I left the beach. If you have any question about what we saw today, ask it in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. If you liked that video, please leave a like, it helps out a lot. New episodes are coming every Thursday, so if you don't want to miss any, make sure to subscribe. And remember, go out there and find something cool.